Hey there, all you aspiring leaders, creative enthusiasts, and curious minds. Welcome to Why Leadership Fails, a podcast where there is no typical gyan, no stereotypical tales of glory. Instead, we bring to you unscripted and unfiltered conversations about real life experiences of leaders navigating setbacks and challenges. I am your host, Bhavna Lal Chandani, VP Digital Business at Hindustan Times. In today's episode, we will be delving into a sweet spot where leadership meets creativity within the captivating world of visual storytelling. What happens when the story is told not via words, but through the lens of a camera? What happens at the intersection of leadership and artistry? Let's find out in today's episode. guest today is an influential personality who is one of India's leading fashion and celebrity photographers. He is known for his iconic annual celebrity calendar, a highly anticipated event in the Indian entertainment industry. Celebrities right from Amitabh Bachchan to Alia Bhatt, Michael Jackson, Sachin Tendulkar, Chris Gale and many more. His lens has captured them all. Let's welcome Mr. Dabu Ratnani. Hey, thank Dabu. you. Hey, Bhavna. Thank you for the amazing introduction. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to have you here today. My pleasure. Thank you. So, Dabu, starting with your journey, right? And <laughs> you come from a Sindhi background and so do I. Right. First and foremost, I'm super proud, you know, <laughs> of the success that you've achieved. Thank so you. It feels, ha- it feels really happy and proud. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, uh, in the Sindhi background, I've always seen that specifically boys, they generally join their dad's business, you know, to take the legacy forward. Or at times, even if it's some profession, it's pretty standard with respect to doctors, engineers. How did you really break the barrier and get into photography as a profession? And more so in the film world. Uh, For this, I have my mom to thank, actually, because uh, really in the 80s and 90s, when uh, both my brother and me decided to take up professions which were not the usual run-of-the-mill and the so-called, like, the professions which are like respected you know my parents were quite open and uh, gave us that opportunity to do what we wanted to my brother became a chef and uh, I took to photography so both of us didn't join the family business and uh, we truly did you know what we enjoyed most and what our heart wanted to do basically and uh, without the support of my parents that would have been impossible, you know, like my grandparents, my chachas and the whole family were all lawyers. And my dad was the first businessman to move out from the lawyers. So oh, he was wow. also like a, a changing the path for his family. And then all of us uh, took took it forward and Vicky became a chef. Yeah. He joined, joined hotel management and, uh, uh, you know, went on the cruise ships for many years and... I was working with my dad and uh, I was not enjoying it. It was like a very boring thing to go to. The, we had a Bombay dyeing uh, retail store. So they oh. go open the store, sell cloth, cut cloth and sell bed sheets <laughs> and all. It was not really inspiring and not job job satisfying for me. So and so in the 12th grade, uh, uh, 11th and 12th, I started doing a bit of photography more as a hobby and uh did some projects for college, like intercollege fashion shows and stuff like that. And uh, that's when I really got interested. And uh, my friends encouraged me in, in college that, you know, pictures are so good, you should think about this. And they were just telling me as a matter of like a conversation, but I really took it really seriously. And in my 12th grade, I went and met Sumit Chopra, who was a photographer, uh, my friend and photographer. And I, he had done his uh, course from Brooks Institute in Santa Barbara. And he was a advertising photographer in fashion and advertising photographer. I went and spoke to him. I said, you know, I'm really getting interested in this and I'm thinking that I want to do this. But so, but I obviously, we were from a middle class family. The choice of going abroad and studying was not an option, you know. I mean, I never traveled abroad even then. So... So he said, uh, you know, you come after your 12th grade if you want. You start wow. working with me. And uh, uh, three years 
I trained in Brooks. You trained with me for three years. I'll teach you more than I learned there, because <laughs> you know he he said that, uh, uh, you know I mean in in those days, out of the three years, one year was actually what he did was like history of photography, mm. printing, processing, things we don't get time to do as well. Right. So you think then if you work with me for those three years, you will first of all learn the whole business of photography. What you don't learn. in america or in london or any photography school will only teach you the techniques theoretical yeah and here you'll meet people here you'll do production you'll learn on the job you know which i felt was my best option so i went back to my parents and i told them this is what i want to do so they said okay let's think about it you know and i gave my 12th exams and i said i'm supposed to join so me tomorrow morning i need to know <laughs> so he said are you fixed up already i said yeah because i told him for my 12th exams ke baad i'll come and tomorrow morning i want to start so my mom said okay you go wow you start lovely. you know and we'll see i said 3 years i need anyway i've got 3 years of commerce bcom left instead of hanging in the canteen i'll go and work with sumit and i'll do correspondence my mm. my education through correspondence and uh, i somehow convinced them and they were really really supportive and uh, my first day i remember my the call time for the shoot was at 6 in the morning and mm. i was staying in bandra and sumit studio was in kolaba so take a bus then a train and then a bus again so i had to leave 2 hours prior so wow. i left the house at 4 woke up at 3 and he was amazed to see me he thought that i'll never make it you know and i was one of the first people to reach the studio on wow. that day so yeah it really paid off and those uh, instead of 3 years i stayed with him for 4 years mm -hmm. and uh, and truly i learned a lot about life I literally i went as a boy and came back as a man wow. <laughs> I think that's truly a story which is very inspiring because I think it's a story of passion right. and perseverance, and that's how your parents probably trusted you because yeah. you showed that kind of passion. So I think so, that's really important. So yeah, I mean that way my parents were really really supportive, and you know, and uh, lots of my friends tried to used to come home and stuff. Used to wanted to discourage my parents. Is what's wrong <laughs> with him? You know, he's left college and he's going to be. Uh, doing correspondence, not attending college. At least he should finish his TY BCom and then think about this. And also, mm -hmm. and they kept telling him, you know, that there's a lot of drugs in the industry. There's so much this in fashion industry, drinking this that. Oh yeah. So my mom told my friend, I was zapped that you know, if he has to do drugs, he doesn't need to go to a fashion photographer to do drugs. He can do it even in college. Correct. I Means it's not that because he's going there. It's that's up to him. I mean, and how he takes it forward. Right. So that trust my mom had in me till date, I've never even taken a puff of a cigarette, you know, wow. till date, you know. So that's awesome. So yeah, so I think my mom had that uh, faith and trust in me. Yeah. Super. So you know, talking about the entertainment industry, how did you get into that? So while I was uh, working with Sumit uh, uh, for those th uh, four years, in between, uh, obviously I met a lot of people and uh, in the industry in terms of the fashion industry, but. My brother's friend was Sanjay Gupta, mm -hmm. and uh, they were in like college together. And he, Sanjay Gupta was making his first film. This was in 1993. It was a mm -hmm. film called Artish, with Sanjay Dutt, mm -hmm. Ravina, Charisma, Atul, yes. big star cast, and uh, G P C P was producing the movie. And uh, Gups uh, Sanjay Gupta was going to Mauritius for a 40-day schedule, and uh, he was shooting climax and songs in Mauritius. And I told uh, Gops, "You all are going to Mauritius. Why don't you speak to the producer? Mm. I'll come uh, for free. I mean, I just for me it'll be more an experience of those forty days. Sure. I've never travelled abroad, and <laughs> and uh, you know, for me, I learn a lot while I'm on the job. You know, and see yeah. a full fledged shooting, and I've never done that. So, so you think I can line up a meeting with you and Vijay Sippy, who's the producer, and you go and speak to him, and you know, I'll put mm. in my word. But finally, it's his call." So I said sure. So I went to Vijay Sippy's house and I said, sir, you know, I'll come in. I'll shoot your whole campaign. I'll shoot like the whole publicity of the film. I'll shoot the continuity, whatever you need me. Only I need you to cover the cost of film because we used to shoot rolls, yeah. not digital that time, mm -hmm. and the cost of film processing, travel, and stuff yeah. like that. And and just you know, I'll come with zero assignment fee. So he said, yeah, but you're so young. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think like. Fifteen, sixteen years old, and I said, like, uh, you know, how do I trust you to do this? I said, I won't let you down. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll do, I'll show him some of my work that I'd done 
while I was assisting yeah. Sumit and I said, you know, this is some of the stuff I've done, but for me, this will be a lifetime opportunity. And so he was convinced and and next week I was in Mauritius. In Mauritius. <laughs> That's interesting. It's really so, interesting. Yeah. And then 40 days I was there with, uh, uh, with Atish and during that whole, uh, we I got really close to Sanjay Dutt, you know, I mean, we became really good friends and that from there he got arrested and you know mm -hmm. when he went to jail and so it was like a big bond we had over there and uh so it connected me a lot to the industry and i felt sure. i felt at home you know and that's when i decided that not just to follow fashion and advertising i i want to be a part of the film industry you know i mean sure. and at that point to be honest uh uh film photography was looked down upon yes. it was it was more like the supermodels the fashion that whole scene was very different in the 80s where you know, yeah, uh, it was called filmy, like, you know, not in a good way, you know, mm. so, uh, and so I, I didn't care about it. I said, for me, whether I'm shooting an actor, whether I'm shooting a model, my goal is to make them look amazing, you know, and make them feel good, do some amazing shots with them. Doesn't matter if he's an actor or model, I'll do it my way. And uh, it was my vision that has kind of, you know, made me, made those pictures which I shot of Artish. When they came out on the billboards, they mm. came out in Stardust and all the magazines. There was like a thing that who shot these? Like, you know, this doesn't look like normal stills. Mm. They don't look like film stills. This is looking like something else, you know. So then the whole trend of taking a photographer for these outdoors started. Then I did loads of films like, you know, to South Africa. I went to Mauritius like 20 <laughs> times. I went to Switzerland like multiple times various films started taking me so every holiday was like in an exotic Australia and you name it and I traveled so much suddenly that all the film publicity shoots was were coming to me you know mm. so and it changed the whole trend of the way uh, the billboards were shot the way the right. way the publicity was happening for movies it was a new look you know and oh. uh, and so people noticed the change and when the mm. magazines started printing the pictures rather than me calling actors actors used to fix up the shoot through a magazine with me so so work started coming and uh, that's when i branched out on my own i told sumit that you know i want to start on my own and he didn't want me to go so <laughs> he told me that uh, i'm offering you partnership in my company you know that you mm. work as like you know we'll call the studio something and we'll be partners in it so it was very tempting because you have to you know the investment in uh, cameras, mm. the investment in lights and everything in, in, in the 80s and 90s was very high sure. because equipment was not available in India. You had to actually travel abroad to get the professional okay. equipment or you have to order it and custom duties were so high. So I was tempted to take the offer, but then I said, no, I think I'll give it a shot and, you know, make my name and see how it works, you know. And uh, he said, okay, it's fine. You you go ahead and do that. And then I uh, Sumit and me are really close even now. Mm. I mean, I mean, it was mm. we've been friends since, and I thank him for my for everything that I am today. You know, so I feel I learned so much because uh, not only he taught me photography, he taught me you know like dealing with people. He took me to the race course. He showed me gambling. <laughs> he showed me everything like a whole three sixty. Yeah. I started parting with him. I mean. Uh, I used to literally go home to sleep for three, four hours, have a bath, and come back to Sumit. You know, so it was an amazing four years with him. Sure, yeah. what an inspiring journey! <laughs> and I must say, I think you know, through this entire conversation, I got so overwhelmed, and I all I could see is focus, you know, passion, and even gratitude for that yeah. matter. You have to be. I mean, I think that uh, gratitude you should learn from Sanjay Dutt. You know, I mean, the mm. way he is, the way I've seen him. You know, since uh, he was my first person I shot with, and uh, and uh, to see him, to see him with the staff, to see him with uh, the spot boys on the set. I mean, the guy is amazing, you know. So I feel every shoot you learn something, you bring back something, you know. You uh, With every person I met, with every uh, uh, outdoor I went to, seeing actors, I, I used to be quiet and just notice them and, you know, do mm -hmm. my own thing. And then finally my results would speak, basically. Sure. <laughs> So, in fact, you know, of course, while the learning journey continues and that's how two, two and a half decades later, you're still infused with so much energy. But definitely, you know, we know that industry, which is specifically the entertainment industry, is known for its unpredictable terrain. Right? There are highs and lows that everybody experiences. Of course, yeah. So, how did you really navigate through that ambiguity? Because it's not easy, right? When you don't know what's next, what's coming up. 
yeah so even my start uh, like when when i started off my uh, this profession in photography like i said it was a new trend uh, photography the photo shoots which you saw in magazines in 80s 90s <clears throat> were very dated i mean you know in terms of uh, you saw these like suppose if you saw a photo shoot of an actress she had this big hairdo or a big turban kind of a thing mm. clothes were over the top mm. you know and i felt that and that was the trend people thought that you know an actor should be portrayed like that when i came in uh the first shoot i remember i mean i so along with artish while i was shooting artish in mauritius uh saroj khan ji was the choreographer mm-hmm. and so she said that can you stay back for four more days so i said for what saying that uh, kajol and sharuka coming for bazigar mm-hmm. and i'll make you shoot that song as well so i said okay i had never shot with kajol sharuka i already knew uh, as a friend of since he came from delhi i've known him i said kajol i want to meet i've heard great things about her and yeah okay, i'll stay back for kajol <laughs> so i stayed back and then we connected with kajol and then when he came back to bombay i planned a photo shoot with mm. kajol and uh, so she said what do you want me to wear and also i said you will just wear blue jeans white shirt simple like a trench coat on top simple like we'll walk mm. on the streets go outdoors so that kind of shoots people are not seen in magazines right. you know so a lot of people appreciated it because they could see the real persona of the actor rather than that whole over decked up things but mm-hmm. i got a lot of flack as well because uh it was disrupt disruptive in terms of photographers didn't know what had hit them in terms yeah. of what is coming in these magazines now why, why are they printing all this why are so basic looks you know like yeah. blue jeans white t-shirt i mean they just look like an ordinary person i said i mean they don't have to you know always be ott you have to sometimes yeah. do something basic you have to do some different kind of photography rather than make them look same and each actor is doing the same thing same kind of makeup same kind of hair uh and in the studio with these heavy duty lighting you know i said let us just be natural let the persona i used to go to actors homes and shoot them in natural light window light uh literally mm-hmm. wearing a ganji as like he's woken up from his sleep <laughs> and come and shot the picture you know like that kind of stuff so yeah. uh, people were loving that kind of you know personality to come through of the actor and uh, so a lot of magazine editors also were getting hassled that you know that what is this outdoor what mm-hmm. is this trend what is it's not going to last and one magazine editor actually called me to her office and she really gave me a lot of uh, stress you know and told me that you're not going to last i give you maximum one year Oh you know God. and uh, uh this is not going to this is not going to work you know mm. what we have set up for so many years you come and just do all these things don't think this is going to how long will you get away with doing this uh, this kind of photography taking them out door going to their homes so I said it's okay i'll see as long as it if it doesn't work then i'll come back to the studio shoots i mean but mm. i want to do something different rather than doing the same what rather than replicating what has already been happening So one year later she calls me back and says that we are coming out with an annual issue of the magazine can you shoot the full magazine for me <laughs> <laughs> so I say yeah sure so I went and met her again and then I mean it was obviously by then it was accepted <clears throat> that okay this is here to stay sure. and people want to try new things rather than doing the same kind of stuff every day so it was a challenge in the beginning mm-hmm. and obviously the investments in terms of equipment in terms of film processing bad debts i mean in the industry in all industries yes. i feel there's equal so. amount of good and bad people so a lot of times i went for shoots didn't get paid and then i had to pay the lab for processing and the rolls and everything so there's a lot to learn but uh, still i'm very thankful you know i made it uh, it's been over 25 years i've been doing this so yeah. i'm and i'm still as excited like my first I day you know that. yeah i'm still uh, still want to try new things i feel there's uh, there's in this creative space you can keep learning you know there's nothing yeah. like you ever achieved or you're a number one or anything it's never like that it's always uh, scope to learn always open to try new things yeah. yeah but what i hear from you you know is that you did face these kind of setbacks of course, and you yeah. know somebody telling you that you're going to last just one year yeah. i think what's really important is to keep going you yeah. know you just kept at it you believed in what you're doing and irrespective of whatever anybody said right. so that's really interesting but however you know when we talk about the entertainment industry hmm. and you did speak about how you learn to deal with people so in the entertainment overall 
any industry for that matter, specifically in this industry where you're, you know, dealing with celebrities, creative minds, of course, it's exhilarating, but pretty challenging as well. Everybody comes with their own moods, mindset, preferences, and you really need a unique dynamic, you know, to deal with all of them. Hmm. So how do you really manage, how do you foster collaboration, you know, within your team and as well as the celebrities that you photograph to get the best out of them? Uh, so I'll be honest in terms of I like it when a person brings in their own thought to it because it's not, uh, they're not just doing it half-heartedly. That just shows that today if an actor or a model or a producer or whoever's involved in the shoot, if is is putting in their two bit as well, if they're adding something to the picture, it's mm-hmm. going to only make the picture better. It's going to make the shoot look... And the way I deal with it, suppose uh, if it's a concept I really like, suppose if I've narrated a concept and he or she have suggested something and I feel that, yeah, it can be better, then I'll incorporate it in my shoot. If I feel it's not going to work, then I'll do both the shots. I'll do it in a way that I want to do it and the way that they suggest as well. And uh, see, you cannot negate that they also have a lot of experience. They come with, when today, if anybody puts a suggestion, you know, they are talking in terms of their experience as well. They are bringing their uh, aura, their own personality, and they also have a kind of a uh, mindset of how they want to be portrayed. Today, when you're shooting, especially with celebrities, uh, I may think, okay, uh, make him lie down on the ground but he will say no you know I mean my image is not like that I may I, I can sit but I don't want to lie down mm. I'm just a thought sure. so I said okay yeah. I said if you want finish the sitting try a few lying down if it doesn't work we won't use the picture finally it's between mm. us you know and and that's one thing I've really maintained uh, is trust you know no one in these 25 plus years can point a finger and say you know you might you you didn't do this for me or i told you something and you did the wrong thing or you nobody can point a finger at me for that basically i've trust is the first thing above money above anything else that i've maintained my relation in these years and i think sure. that's one thing also that has kept me going uh, because uh, I'll tell you, like, there were many shoots where we do, and in the days of film, where we mm. didn't, you know, digital, now you can see what you're shooting. In the yeah. film days, they just have to trust the photographer who's behind the lens. I mean, you know, they have to, so sometimes they're doing really sexy pictures, you know, and uh, and out of that, when the results come and an actress has turned back and told me, you know, these two outfits, I think we should not use. Mm. So I said, okay, why? And she said, no, it's, it's, I think it's too sexy, much more than <laughs> I imagined so i said okay and that was the day and nobody else has seen those pictures oh it's gone into my archives where Mm. you know it was never released never there was a ban in the industry where the actors had stopped giving interviews and posing for magazines for a few few Mm. years magazines were ready to pay double triple four times for pictures which were unused Mm. because magazines still needed to come out that's a treasure and uh, i said no a certain pictures I cannot give, you yeah. know, you know, because that's a trust that I have, kind of maintained that I've, um, that that is much more important than making a few lakhs at that point. Sure, and in fact, that's a very important leadership trait, right? Credibility right. and trust. Absolutely. So, absolutely. irrespective of any industry, I think yeah. that is something which. So even if ingrained. you're going through a low, even if you're going through uh, issues with finance or whatever, you cannot break the trust, you know, because the minute that goes, now I mean, your life is over True. in this industry. Very true. In fact, you know, we've spoken about your craft. We've spoken about, you know, the creativity of it. Blending it into the practicalities of a successful business, you know, which you're doing it so well. How do you manage that aspect of it? Apart from the Sindhi jeans. (laughs) So, uh, to be honest, I mean, uh, uh, Sindhi jeans definitely have (laughs) played a big thing because I have come from a uh, finance background in terms of business and stuff. But... Like I said, for me, the creative is more important than that. And uh, uh, so since I got married, Manisha handles most of the whole production and finance and admin and everything. So I can just focus more on the creative part. And but she's also Manisha and me share the same birthday. We are 24 December. Interesting. So we are like almost similar kind of people. So so she also has that thing about more, you know, more about the relation to with people, more about creativity than the money you know so I mean it's always been that 
okay, we'll get paid, but let's at least get a great shot first, you know. So, uh, so she handles most of the uh, admin and business and the finance and uh, dealing with people okay. and production and everything. And so I can do more of the shooting and the focus on concepts and creativity and stuff like that. So it's an equal balance. And when you have mm. your family running your business, I feel that's the best thing, you know. And mm. that's also one challenge when we go getting married and uh, she one day walked into my studio and she had not, she was working with the Times of India and she uh, was in Jaipur and she moved to Bombay and uh, she came to my studio for a day and she opened my Mac, my laptop and she saw some 4,000 emails unanswered, you know, because I was one man show at that point. Before yeah, marriage, I was... Sure. Doing admin, doing photography, doing billing, doing everything myself, yeah. you know, and with my small team at that point. And so she and so she said, oh, can I answer these emails? I said, yeah, please. At the end of the day, there were only 200 emails which are not wow. answered. So I said, wow, you're quitting your job, you know. <laughs> so so she said, yeah, but, you know, like a lot of people have discouraged us uh, to work together, mm -hmm. you know, because they said that, you know, uh, a couple working together, the dynamics. you know, dynamics. And plus also it'll affect your relation and you know it's like sure. but I think for me it worked completely in a different way it worked for, for my advantage and if you have someone who you can trust with your complete finances you know there's no secrets you know you know exactly what's happening in the business so she can easily follow up and do the rest of the things very easily right. so I feel that having her in the business has really helped me and the best thing that's happened to me. <laughs> Amazing. In fact, you know, when you spoke about 4,000 emails which went unanswered, right. it, you know, the thing that comes to mind or the question that's on mind is that how do you leverage technology today with the advent of technology, social media, etc.? How do you really manage to do that? Who is the most innovative amongst the two of you? So uh, my social media... Uh, I pull out the data in terms of what is to be posted and stuff and I... But the... Handling of it is done by Manisha and my kids. <laughs> they do the, uh, they decide the concept, if it's a reel, if it's a, you know, what the theme should be. Sure. So editing, posting, my kids and Manisha handle that part, you know, because, uh, and kids are uh, 11, 12 and 14. So they have uh, much more t uh, cooler ideas in terms of today, what the trends are, which tra yeah. which songs are trending, you know, so... With me and the kids, it's more like they teach me about what is the new music. We sh we have a we share our playlists and everything, so it's good to have sure. a lot of new uh, thoughts and you know these young minds working on the social media. Yeah. And yet preserving the essence of your signature style, right? And blending both technology as well as yeah. the creative part of it. And I think family being a part of it, it's so they're doing it with their hundred percent as well. Sure. You know, so it's not like a job where uh, I tried uh, to. Hire a social media manager at one point, but it didn't work out well. So I feel that that personal personal touch is very very important. The sure. way you write, the way you speak, ideas. My the company which I tied up with, they were giving me a lot of controversial ideas. You know, to, to, <laughs> so I said like I said it's not my personality. You know, I mean for me, like I said, my relation is more important True. rather than opposing and doing some random, uh, uh, you know, just to get a few followers or get a few. Uh, likes more I'm not going to put out a post which is right. doesn't work with my sensibility yeah. absolutely so you know interesting chat and I think we've <laughs> spoken about your art and creativity so much <laughs> and you know it's really um, now time to take some interesting conversation where we hear from our audiences okay so you know we move into a segment called Janta Unfiltered where we actually get the voice of the audience in the conversation. Lovely. Here we call in some queries and we post it to the guest as is because this podcast, as you know, is all about unfiltered conversations, right? right? So I'm going to read the question to you as it is. We picked up one from the fabulous and the fantastic pouring in of queries that we had. <laughs> okay, sure. So let me read the question to you. So they say, in fact, there, this question is actually from Ashwin from Pune. And he says, Dabu, we often see the final stunning photographs. Can you share a fun or unexpected BTS story from a celebrity photo shoot, a memorable moment that left a lasting impression on you? There's so many. I mean, like I said, been, but uh, I think I, I can, what comes to my mind is, uh, first of all, uh, my first ever photo shoot, which was with Sanjay Dutt. And uh, which was for Atish, and uh, 
so it was uh, it was Mauritius Independence Day, and we were uh, we had the day off. There was no shoot that day, and uh, we had to attend the Independence event in the second half. So the morning was free. So Sanju, the the previous night we were all partying together, and Sanju came up with a plan that we are going fishing tomorrow, deep sea fishing. So I said okay, and it's like. Already two in the morning, and he calls and he books the boats and everything. And okay, we are leaving at six in the morning. So I said, Im- impossible. I mean, to say it's two two thirty. Why don't we sleep will be four? Yeah. How are we going to go at six? And he says, and Sanj comes to me and says, Dubs, you have to carry your camera with you. <laughs> I've just bought a new camera before going to Mauritius for this particular shoot. And uh, the enemy of what of the cameras is seawater. Any Absolutely. basically any corrosion or any. If it gets wet, you might as well throw it into the sea. Don't bring it back. It's like that bad. So I mentally thought I'm not going to carry it, but he said you have to come. There's that and bring the. So I said first of all, the trip should happen. In my head, I'm thinking. <laughs> so uh, I said okay. We finished. We reached home to the rooms at four o'clock and slept and everything. Six in the morning, my phone rings in the reception and Sanju sir is waiting down. I was zapped that he hasn't slept all night. He's just come. Anyway, got ready, went down purposely. I forgot my camera bag and went downstairs. And he says that uh, we got in the car and went in. And he says, "I don't see your camera bag." <laughs> so I said, "How do you even remember?" He said, "No, no." But I said, "No, you'll get wet, son. You know the water and this that." So so he says, "No, you have to bring it." Takes the car back to the hotel, oh, yeah. gets down with me. Both of us go to my room. He picks up my bag and we come down to the car. I said, okay, now if it goes, now what? He said, if it gets wet, now I'll buy you a new camera. <laughs> he's telling me. So I said, okay, let's go. Went and I'm so thankful. Those pictures which I shot in the fishing trip became the billboard of Artish. Wow. That till date, if you ask Sanju, till date, I'm saying even like last week when I spoke to him, if you ask him what's your best shot, that one picture we had done on the fishing trip. He still messages me those, you know, <laughs> variations of those pictures, and they keep yeah. releasing. He says, "Check this out, check this out," and you know. So, and that picture, if you go to Manita's office, it's a huge blow up behind her de- chair as well, you know, because that mm-hmm. picture has been so special for yeah. all of us. And that was the picture which launched my career. That was my first picture I saw on a billboard. Wow. That was the first picture which came out of the poster in Stardust. So that was the, what. Uh, is I, today I am is because of that one picture. Wow! Yeah. So you know, first love, yeah. first job, first shoot, yeah. and first many, picture. Yeah, there are so, so many, memorable many, yeah. And this is always this is always my first yeah. thing I speak about. But of course, and lots of shoots that I've done over the years. Right. You know, with so many actors, and the especially my calendar shoots, they are there's a lot of unfiltered BTS over there happening because we right. shoot most of the making on video, and most times we can't end up using it because the actors are completely chilled out. There's no agency, no client, nobody. It's only his team and my team who's at a shoot. You know, so and it's right. a creative shoot, it's fun shoot. So it's always. Uh, Lots of crazy stuff happening at our calendar shoots. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure Ashwin really enjoyed your story. <laughs> Thank you. Great. So you know, continuing with the fun, mm. because you know, while this podcast is about leadership, but of course, leadership ingredients a lot of traits, and fun is one part of it. Right. So we'll continue to our next segment, which is called sixty second spin. Okay. And in that, you have to be witty. You have to be quick. I'm <laughs> going to pose some questions at you. And you need to answer as quick as possible. I'll we'll try. I'm not questions. very good at that, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Are you ready to come along Thank for a spin you. with me? Let's go spin. <laughs> Great. So, if you could swap roles with any celebrity for a day and be in front of the camera, who would it be and why? Ranveer Singh. <laughs> <laughs> I love his style. I love his energy. I think uh, he is full power. I think he is totally. someone. Uh, uh, I've not done that many shoots with him, but I mean, I've whatever I've shot with him, he's uh, like full power. He's insane, and you see all his stories, the way he explains the shot, the behind the scenes. I mean, he's full. Who's and I love the way he styles yes. himself. I think uh, you know, I love the colors. I love uh, what he does, and he's yeah. the one he really pulls it off really well. So some people don't like it, but I, th- I'm, I'm a total fan of his dressing. Totally yeah. agree. <laughs> Great. If not a photographer, you would be a DJ. Oh wow! Still creative. <laughs> I love music, yeah. So I think in in my shoots right now, I try and uh, prepare a playlist for that particular shoot that I'm doing, depending which actor I'm going to be shooting. Mm-hmm. So I'll go prepared with oh, a playlist nice. uh, 
depending on the mood of the shoot yeah and your mom would still be fine with dj <laughs> as well <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i guess <laughs> okay your favorite sindhi food uh i like the the mutton the the particular sindhi mutton that they make right i think sale mutton is called from sale mutton yeah, yeah. yeah. but i don't have that i don't <laughs> you're <eat>. vegetarian <laughs> <laughs> so hence <laughs> otherwise i would have said yeah koki and dal pakwan i love koki as well yeah, yeah so yeah, then yeah, here yeah, we go yeah. <laughs> great a celebrity crush you had during a photo shoot i think i got crushes on everybody i think it, for me <laughs> for me it is very important manisha to, is watching yeah it's good <laughs> and she knows i think it's very important that whoever you're shooting should be your muse for the day right. you know so unless you don't love the subject you're shooting you don't make them feel good you don't make them you know feel that special they won't look special i feel sure. that it's important to be in love with who you're shooting with it's important to kind of uh make them feel really great at the shoot you know and right. that's when they feel that they look good you feel good you look good so it's, i mean i try to right. i try to you know make every moment special every shoot that i do you're running out of time but this last <laughs> question i have to ask you so if you were tasked with a photo shoot featuring our honorable prime minister mr narendra modi what unique scenario or setting would you envision to capture the essence of his leadership and personality very interesting i really want to shoot with him uh, because i've never i mean i i think he's he makes great pictures you're manifesting it yeah, out here i want to do it i want definitely shoot and uh, with him i'd like to do something uh, in a really open space maybe uh kutch run of kutch or something where you see the whole yeah. uh, you know, all, all in the sand dunes of jaisalmer the entire landscape and landscape with him and the power and uh, with some interesting maybe some props like camels and stuff like that make it look very uh, picturesque and yes. still show the power interesting and i hope that can happen <laughs> I someday <hope> so. <laughs> Great so that's the end of Thank 60 you. seconds Thank and you, you did well I did well <laughs> I'm not really good kind at of. rapid fires <laughs> <laughs> Thank you thanks so much Tabu <laughs> So now with this we move to our last segment which is called Expert Edge wherein I would like you to share a quick thought on why leadership fails and one mantra for being an effective leader I would speak in terms of my profession uh so why it would fail is that if you get into photography for the wrong reason you know so during my a uh, journey of photography i met many people who says i want to be a dabu ratnani but you know i feel really uh, touched and honored when they say that but you know the reason sometimes they come up with is because they want to meet celebrities because they want to they think that our life is always around pretty girls which is a very wrong reason and you will yeah. not not uh, uh, become a successful photographer if you get into any profession for the wrong reasons basically so i feel that uh, until you don't have the passion until you don't have the fire you have to like for me i i'm breathing photography yeah i'm breathing creativity i'm always thinking when i go out to for a holiday or to a hotel or to a restaurant my first thought is looking at the place for can i plan a shoot here hmm. I means it's in my it's in my head it's in my blood stream i can't control that Right. So only when you're so obsessed with any profession is when you can give it your one hundred percent. Only then you can really sustain for so many years. In these twenty-five plus years, I've seen uh, many photographers mm. who come make a huge noise and fizzle out in a year yeah. or two. I mean, with due respect, but that's because they got into it for the wrong reason. They that if they get that popularity. they it hits their head so badly that they can't handle the success yes you know and then they start uh, putting down other people and they i mean you should have respect for all your colleagues all the people in the industry you know you don't think that today if you're getting work and you're successful you can't run down the rest of the people you know so Absolutely. so in those one two years they come and they go they come and they go i mean i've seen it only few people have sustained so long you know i feel so it's very important to have respect to have uh the fire to kind of sustain that and to kind of keep excited keep yourself excited about uh for me i think my calendar is something which has kept me really going in terms of because every year i'm doing a a job which is non commercial i'm doing it purely 
uh, for creativity. I'm doing it purely to outdo what I have done before. Mm. My competition is with my previous calendars. Yeah. You know, I've shot six, seven hundred concepts with various actors. So every calendar, I'm thinking, okay, what new? What new? What have I not done in these twenty five years or these twenty three, twenty three years, twenty three years? So twenty three years, what have I not done in calendar that I have to do new now? Because I don't yeah. want to repeat any concept. With any other actor which I've done before, so if I if I did a concept in like say two thousands or in the nineties, which I feel I want to redo, I might go back to my old concept and redo it with a new actor now, thinking I could have done that better. Right. There are many times in 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 my profession where now when you look back, say at my two thousand seventeen calendar or sixteen calendar, and I'll say, oh, you know, this could have been better. This concept could have been. It's a way of evolving. I feel you when you yeah. look at your own work and you say, okay, this could have been better. That means I've come. ahead of that i mean i'm thinking that okay you know and many times when i post a picture on social media i get uh, people giving me ideas saying are you should have put added the glasses in this or you should have made her mm. do this or you could have tried this hairstyle sometimes it's great sometimes i mean they just want attention but sometimes you get some really interesting uh, suggestions you know so i i pretty much read all my dms and my oh. <laughs> all my messages that i get on the picture as well to see what the reaction of the picture has been so i think it's it's all about learning it's all about right. you know keep uh, pushing it and keep getting better and better so i mean with any profession i feel that you've never learned enough sure absolutely <laughs> and which is why after 23 years <laughs> You know, every single year the <laughs> annual celebrity calendar is still unique. Yeah, that's what right? so I keep trying. <laughs> that's great and truly inspiring. In fact, I Thank really uh, admire the way you, you know, convert all the moments into such amazing masterpieces. <laughs> Thank and you. And I think this conversation has been really inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, you. <laughs> you know, your passion, focus, all of that. I'm sure it's uh, all the aspiring photographers, all the aspiring leaders out there would really gain from this conversation. Thank you. So thanks so much, Thank Labu. Thank you, Baba. Thank you so much. Well, that's a wrap with the incredible Labu Ratnani. A sincere thank you to our audience for staying tuned in. Please feel free to comment and share your thoughts on today's episode. If you have a specific topic or guest in mind, please do let us know via our comments. We'll be happy to hear from you. And don't forget to join us in our next episode, an epic journey filled with stories and conversations that will not just leave you mesmerized but also inspired and entertained. Until then, all you leaders out there, keep slaying, keep inspiring, and continue leading the way. This is me, Bhavna Lal Chandani, signing off.